one. That's just insane. Next up, we have the specs. So in terms of the CPU, we're going to get the Apple A10 chip and with the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. And the Apple A10 chip is actually based on a smaller process, a 10 nanometer process this time, so it's actually the die size is smaller, so it's more power efficient, and it's also more powerful than the A9. Some rumors have initially suggested the Apple A10 chip to be a 6-core CPU, which would just be insane because this would be, in this case, this would be a multi-threading beast. So if this is the case, then we will get much better performance in apps such as GarageBand, for example, which do have to optimize complex projects before they can be played in real time, by the way. So this just might be a thing of the past with the iPhone 7. The Apple A9 S had the best RAM management. It managed to hold the most apps open in the background. So overall, in terms of the performance, even though you won't be noticing that much of a difference between the two models, the iPhone 7 Plus is still a better choice. Next up, number four, we have the camera. The resolution is going to be the same on both models, 12 megapixels, basically the same resolution as we had with the iPhone 6s and the iPhone 6s Plus. Now in terms of the aperture, on the iPhone 6s we have an f2.2 aperture, which is, it's a pretty small one, so in low light the camera is actually pretty bad. Yeah, this is an iPhone 6s versus an S7 Edge. The S7 Edge comes with an f1.7 aperture, and on the iPhone 7 we're going to get an aperture size of f1.7 to f1.9, so it's most likely going to be f1.7 by the way, so much much better low light photography. On the iPhone 7 Plus we're going to get a dual camera module. And this is a really interesting thing, it was developed by Lynx Technology and it will basically have two functions. The first one is going to be optical zoom, so you'll be able to zoom in a photo without losing that much quality, and this is because one of the lenses is a telephoto lens, so you would get a zoomed out shot, and the other one is a normal or a macro lens, so you get a more zoomed in shot. And then the iPhone will combine those two images and you will be able to zoom and post without losing that much quality. And this will work for both photos and videos. And then the second function is in terms of low light photography. So Lynx technology has actually patented this. Basically each camera takes a photo at a different ISO level and then the iPhone compares those two images and cleans up the noise and yeah, the images look like this. Now in terms of the aperture of the iPhone 7 Plus, it should be the same on both the lenses. So between f1.7 to f1.9, again, most likely f1.7 on both lenses. So yeah, the iPhone 7 Plus's camera does come with some pretty unique features. Now in terms of other features, such as optical image stabilization, previously with the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6s, we only had OIS on the iPhone 6s and 6 Pro. The Pro model is the one with the dual camera, the smart connector, and that one also came with 3GB of RAM. And this is most likely the version that we will be getting only with the iPhone 7 Plus name. So 3GB of RAM on the iPhone 7 Plus and 2GB on the iPhone 7. And same as with the processor frequency, you won't actually be noticing any, any big difference on the iPhone 7 Plus. And this is because the RAM management in iOS is already pretty good. I actually did a video a while ago in which I compared multiple smartphones with different amounts of RAM, an iPhone 6 with 1GB, an iPhone 6s with 2GB, and a OnePlus 2 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. And surprisingly, the iPhone 6s 60 by 1440 those displays just look incredible. In terms of the PPI, we have 326 on the iPhone 7, so the standard Retina PPI, and then on the iPhone 7 Plus, we have 401, so much higher, which basically makes the iPhone 7 Plus much better for VR. Although Apple doesn't actually sell any VR headsets, the only VR headset that works on the iPhone is the Google Cardboard. But Google Cardboard is really bad because of the motion blur, so hopefully Apple will develop their own VR headset soon, something like the Samsung Gear VR, or maybe even better. Now, in terms of the display technology, this is still going to stay LCD for both the models, unfortunately. Apple's only going to switch to OLED next year is just huge. The iPhone 7 has a height of 138 millimeters and the iPhone 7 Plus has a height of 158 millimeters. That's a massive difference, 20 millimeters or two centimeters, that's huge. In terms of the width, 67 versus 78 millimeters, so massive 11 millimeter difference, and even to mention the slightly thicker body that we get with the iPhone 7 Plus, yeah, the iPhone 7 Plus is a pretty massive phone. Now, the iPhones have already had pretty thick top and bottom bezels, so just for comparison, this is an iPhone 6s Plus versus a Samsung Galaxy 7 Edge, and interesting enough, both phones have the exact same display size, 5.5 inches, however, the difference in size is just incredible. And finally, weight-wise, the iPhone 7 is going to come at about 140 to 150 grams, whereas the iPhone 7 Plus will come at 190 to 200 grams. So yeah, the iPhone 7 Plus is 